I don't know if it's so right. It's another day in cloud glory. The white knight of Reese is so lower. Summer's scroll. Intervals recounting what nightmares. I cannot close my eyes but see terror in the darkness of dreams. Lurid grotesqueries stalk beyond the rings of my mind's candlelight. Striking when I cannot keep among the waking any longer. I have tried all methods for calming my thoughts. Meditation, hypnosis, even honey berry tea. But the moment I slip into sleep, I am once more assailed by the terrors that await me there. In a moment of desperation, I turn to my quill. In writing what I see in dream, I hope that I may expel the darkness I see at night. 
In dream I sit on gentle shore of our tail, where waves from the endless ether lap sand. The sun sits low and red in the sky, almost mocking me with tranquility. Then from the sea erupts a creature, gigantic, corrupted with the parasitic spawn of the ocean recess that makes its way to shore, leaving a foam of crimson in its wake. All the water around it turns black, all the fish die, all the wind and roar is quiet. Its five heads rake and bite one another, crying with their destined voices. And despite the first nodding and rhythm of his heads, the creature still plods forward, so in destruction as it does. One of the heads is little more than rotting flesh and bone. And even as he roars, I see the bottom feeders of the ocean depths feasting on his putrid flesh. With his very roar, with his every roar, that dead tremble and dance, puppets on strings before his unholy power. His second head bore postures and pox scars, both his blisters of fluid that glowed in crimson and sheen. These would burst oozing their contents into one another, and these horrible concoctions would hiss and sputter, burn and smoke. The others would lap this foul glee in this way. A third head was black as night without stars, as onyx in a windowless room, and darker still were his eyes, pulling the shadows made long by the sun into a shroud of pure darkness. The fourth head was obscure to me. I could not discern his features. But the last, the fifth head, so terrible it was to behold, for it was several times the size of the others. By screeching, only with the others trembling, quailed their frightening. This massive head was little more than a ring of teeth, seated upon which was a terrible brain. A loathsome mortal thing, its wrinkles and folds, adulating in a sinister and nauseating series of pulses. Strands of ichor and wild seep from his fleshy recess. As barnacles and polyps to fix to his surface seem to gasp for want of air. Then the creature's heads turn their attention to me. I was frozen, and frozen, and will always be frozen, but the eyes raking over me. Worse still is the song they sing, in unison, ruinous cacophony. Kitorar garza, pecorhen semaha, ulvorcus waits, ulvorcus he wakes. Kitorar garza, pecorhen semaha. And at the apex of this terrible verse, as the sun gave way to terrible night, I would see the outline on a distant horizon, a mountain forming from the sea and falling into the water. From this peak were more creatures, and too many to count and too horrible to name. And they're coming, and they're coming for us. And when the sun goes down completely, I awake, screaming, yeah. The white night from the rift reads, he is so lower. The end.
is so lower for the white knight will read Boethius proving the following account uh, it's true and may serve as warning to those with ears to hear and hearts to know on a certain day at a certain time the faithful they gathered to perform certain rituals, hoping to gain a glimpse of their master. The day was correct, the summoning true. Slashing a smoking tear through the veil, she, her very self, appeared before them. Terrible and resplendent, she came arrayed in evening, darker than moonless night. Wielding blade, burning hotter than the surface of the sun. And though she wore the guise of a dungeon warrior queen, she towered above them like a statue from the red mountain itself. Why have you disturbed me? Surprised among them prayed, and first of them prayed, O oh, Boethia, Prince of plots, deceiver of nations, queen of shadows, goddess of destruction, we come to worship thee. She looked down upon her followers, gathered from her witness. Frowning, she asked the first, Tell me, you who professes to know me, how shall I know you? Feared, he exclaimed, each night I pray to thee. Each night I call out thy wondrous names. Surely thou must recognize the sound of my voice. Thy most devoted belief. She frowned and let out a long sigh. And then of the sudden he was gone. The air from her lungs dispersing him. Turning to the second she asked. In you. How shall I measure the worth of your existence? Stunned by the power of her voice, he bowed before her darkening visage. She clapped her hands, and he too was gone. To the third, and you tell me, how shall I know you apart from such as were they of whom there is no trace? Shaken and speechless, for the nullification of his brethren, he whispered, Have mercy upon us. She blinked twice. Once he was in agony, twice he was destroyed. She cast a withering glance across the remaining and said, I do not grant mercy. And so it was with the others, she putting them to proof and they offering none. And finally she came to me, eyes aglow with anger and tongue wet with hate and said, Of all my believers but two remain, tell me second to last, with what shall you prove your existence? Without hesitation, I drew forth my blade and buried it in the chest of the other who stood beside me. And without fear, I replied, Ask him whose blood now spouts from my blade if I exist. Chia, and she smiled, and the gates of oblivion opened between her teeth. And then she said, Tell me, now last of my followers, wherefore do you remain where the others do not? I retrieved my blade and offered it up, saying, I'm alive because Taiwan is dead, and I exist because I have the will to do so, and I shall remain as long as there are signs of my handwork, such as the blood dripping from this blade. Accepting my gift, she nodded and said, Indeed, 
is in the reading. Your blood boils in your veins, and your mind blazes in fire. And Boethia calls you, and it is then most wise to heed her call. The white knight from the rift of reeds is so lower. The end. Story time. Adra and Daedra is so lower. The designations of gods, demons, Adra and Daedra are universally confusing to the layman. They are often uh, used interchangeably. Adra and Daedra are not relative terms, they are elvish and exact. Azura is a Daedra, both in Skyrim and Morrowind. Adra is usually translated as ancestor, which is as close as Cyrodelic can come to this elven concept. Daedra means roughly not our, our ancestor. Not our ancestor. This distinction was crucial to the Dunmer, whose fundamental split in ideology represented in their mythical genealogy. Daedra are associated with stasis. Daedra represent change. Daedra created the mortal world and are bound to the earth bones. Daedra who cannot create have the power to change. As part of the divine contract of creation, Daedra can be killed Witness Lord Khan and the moons. The Protean Daedra, for whom the rules do not apply, can only be banished. The White Knight reads he is so lower. Aedra, Aedra. The end. He is so lower, a prisoner's journal. I don't remember who I am or where I came from. Where, where did I come from? I don't know what I did to deserve this terrible existence. But it must have been inabominable. Why else would I be a prisoner in the Tower of Lies? Today, I broke rocks, lots and lots of rocks, hundreds of rocks, 
They needed to be chipped and chopped and smashed. It was sweaty, back-breaking work, but I did it. I did it until my arms ached and my hands bled, and then I did it some more. Today, an ogrim tortured me. It took me into one of the huts and locked me in stocks, and then he whipped me. The lash, the pain. It went on and on. I let my mind drift, trying to remember better times and better places. I know I thought about something, but the memory doesn't stick. It is like trying to grasp mist before it dissipates the sun, or something like that. But what was I talking about? Remember. Today, I listened to Frizz, the Unraveler. He does love to talk. He goes on and on about how wonderful life is in the Tower of Lies. I could listen to his voice all day. It comforts me. It frightens me. It makes me want to cry. Why? Why won't he stop shouting at me? Why won't he stop shouting at me? Why? What day is it now? Bugs. There are bugs crawling on me, all over my body, into my eyes, into my mouth. I try to brush them away, but they keep on coming back. Persistent, insistent, twelve. Today, today is yellow. I thank my ogrim tormentor today. To show me how much he cared, he beat me. He beat me for an hour more. My skull itches. Why are the rocks screaming every time I hit them? And my hammer, they cry out in pain. I think, uh, I used to be in some sort of a guild. I think, but I think that's uh, why I'm here. We, we, we must have done something yellow. He is so lower. The white knight reads a prisoner's journal. The end. He is so lower. Apocrypha, Apocrypha. The infinite archives of Hermia's Mora are the ultimate treasure. Its innumerable shelves and countless books carry the weight of all knowledge. Therein, the vigilant reader can find all that was and all that is and all that will be. Followers of the divines, content in their dark cloisters of ignorance, they preach hatred of the golden eye. Daedra, they call him, unclean, monstrous, and wicked. But we have seen the truth. Knowledge is only as wicked as the one who wields it. Forsaking learning in the fear of its misuse is the ultimate sin. It is an unforgivable folly. As a result, mortals have suffered countless centuries of loss. 
in Apocrypha, the golden eye weeps cold tears at this plague of ignorance. Those who walk his halls are truly blessed, even as their flesh falls away. They are permitted to browse the infinite tomes and scrolls previewed that have and ever will exist. It is the most blessed of fates. We, we give you praise, Hermias Mora. We seek enlightenment, illumination, and a place at your side. The White Knight reads, he is so lore, the end. That is the end for story time for Cladlorn. You people uh, have a good day. Read more, and if you don't know how to read, you need to learn. But it's good for you. That is good for your mind. But they say that the best graphics card out there in the world is the mind. <laughs>